Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships with Wadrace and for today's video we are going over what is probably one of the two most controversial ships in World of Warships right at the moment. Yes, this is the tier 10 premium ship, the Smolensk Russian, of course, available through the armory for a rather sizable amount of coal. Um, obviously, this is a ship that anybody can get a hold of for free just by playing the game and getting hold of coal through normal gameplay. And, well, she is also widely regarded as being one of the most overpowered ships in the game right at the moment, despite her basic statistics. Um, and I'll kind of get into that as this uh, review moves forward, but for right at the moment we're going to talk about her stats, and then I will uh, get into the greater discussions as I go into the actual battle play. Starting off looking at her armor layout, she's really nothing special overall. I mean, she's semi-standard light cruiser armor, 16mm uh, fore and aft. She does have some thicker plates in odd places, especially towards the uh, bottom of the ship for whatever reason. She's got 25mm strips. And her side armor belt isn't exactly the thickest. She's got 30mm, and her uh, main belt is 70 millimeters, a little bit lower down. So she is actually pretty soft for a tier 10 cruiser. Um, she's definitely a light cruiser, and she's far from being a heavy cruiser. Heavy cruisers would be a little bit more, um, well, if I pull out, say, my Chepayev. Yeah, substantially thicker armor in some places. Um, so She's definitely got light cruiser, bow, stern, and heavy, almost-ish cruiser sort of uh, armor belts. If anything, the thickest armor this ship actually has is the uh, front plates of her citadel, or, or her turrets, the conning tower, and the uh, athwartship uh, armor plates. But that's really nothing special again overall. Um, if a battleship looks at her wrong, they will uh, definitely penetrate her very easily. And, and But some of those armor thicknesses too, you can't exactly rely on her being overpenned too well either. So that, that I suppose is one thing to uh, consider. Unless of course you're looking at her sideways on and punching through that bow or stern. But yeah. So she's actually capable of taking quite a bit of damage if uh, you're positioned wrong or anything. Going over her survivability stats, she has a base hit point value of 32,400. Um, and I say base, when, what I really mean is that is what she has overall. She does not have any additional hull options or anything to change that. But she is a tier 10, so she would at least benefit fully from, say, Survivability Expert, which would give her an extra 3,500 HP if you feel like investing in that. Since she is a light cruiser, it might help her out. Boost her up to about 35,900 hit points. Not sure if that would help in a uh, long-run match overall, but I suppose it's still something when you really think about it. Now for what really makes her interesting, she has four quadruple main battery turrets, and these are small caliber destroyer guns. These are 130 millimeter turrets, um, so you're not really relying on a whole lot of penetration to do too much damage here. Um, <coughs> in fact, even with IFHE on her, I've got... 28 millimeters of penetration, so you're not even really penetrating bow and stern of uh, tier 10 battleships, but at least you are passing the threshold for most uh, cruisers. So there is that to be said. Um, but these guns have a very high rate of fire, 4.5 second reload, and they also turn real damn fast, 180 degrees in 5.5 seconds. You could actually put on one of the uh, turret modifications for rotation, 
like uh, main battery mod 3 and you would not feel that traverse speed reduction at all and you would get a major bonus to a rate of fire. Personally, I prefer to have my range of fire in some cases, so I mean that's why I've opted for fire control system mod 2, but I'll I, I'm going to be discussing the mods a little bit more in detail later. She does have two quintuple torpedo launchers, one on each side, and these are your standard Russian torpedo tubes. They've got an 8 kilometer range, nothing special, and they are somewhat slow-ish with a speed of only 60 knots. So if you want your torpedoes to be a little bit better, I would say opt for torp acceleration, but considering what this ship's strengths are, you're probably not even going to go with torpedo build at all. You're just going to want to buff those guns as much as you possibly can. For her AA defenses, she has, well, she is a light cruiser, so she does have some fairly phenomenal AA to uh, not put too fine a point on it. Those, she's got two twenty, or, okay, she's got four quadruple 25 millimeter batteries. She's got six quadruple 45 millimeter batteries, which are those things right there. And then, of course, there's her main armament, which serves dual purpose as well. And, yeah, you can see they can pretty much go full vertical on their, on their aiming angles. <laughs> <clears throat> um, overall, her short range does 70 continuous damage per second, and that is anything from 3.1 kilometers up to 0.1 kilometers. Her mid-range does 210 damage per second, and that's the same range as the short range overall. And then her long-range aura has eight flak bursts in a salvo, which do 1,890 points of damage each per second. And the continuous damage per second of the long-range aura is 189 damage per se or points per second. And that reaches out to six kilometers. So yeah, she's got some very, very uh, workable AA overall. As far as her maneuverability, she reaches 35 knots. She's got a tight-ish turning circle at 750 meters. And her rudder kicks over in 6.6 .6 seconds with, yeah, with rudder shift or steering gears mod 2. So she is relatively maneuverable overall. As far as her detectability, she is seen on the surface at 11.2 kilometers with concealment mod 1 and nothing else. So, I mean, she is nice and stealthy under the right circumstances. Her detectability range by air is 6.7 kilometers. So she is detected 0.7 kilometers before her uh, secondary battery or her AA guns open fire, so there's really no point in even keeping her AA off for any reason at all whatsoever. And after firing her main battery in smoke, she is seen at 5.9 kilometers. So ships can actually get reasonably close to her in her smoke screen before she really starts being uh, threatened, I guess I could say. And this is, well, this is where I come in for s at least making the argument of co-op versus random, because in co-op, Smoke screens aren't as t as much torpedo magnets as they are in uh, random battles. Random battles, people know ships are hiding in there. Bots really don't give a shit. If, if, if they can't actually see a ship directly, they're not going to try firing anything at anything that could potentially hide a ship. So there is that to be said, at least for co-op matches. Um, and, well... This ship also does get the several bonuses over the uh, Kutuzov, which is what she is probably most likely going to be compared to, especially in the gunnery department, because the Kutuzov has slightly larger guns, and she's also seen at almost two kilometers further with her uh, main battery in smoke. So th there is that to be said as well. She's much stealthier than the Kutuzov. So there is that to be had at least, and that's probably part of why people consider this ship to be so overpowered, is because she does have some direct comparisons to the Kutuzov, especially as almost a uh, floating flamethrower in some regards. 
And it, it can just be a pain to mess with her, and I can understand that entirely. As far as ship modules and upgrades, I've already talked about a couple. I did opt for the Gunfire Control System Mod 2 just because I like having my main battery range. I like being able to open fire at things at longer range, especially if I'm already hiding in smoke anyway. I'm, I do think that I am reasonable at projecting my distances better than some. So I, I do like having that range to uh, be able to work on targets a little bit more. Concealment System Mod 1, of course, because the only other options for this ship would be Steering Gears Mod 3, which I suppose you could argue as far as just uh, bringing their maneuver maneuverability out a little bit more, uh, kick that rudder over a little bit faster. The only other thing would be Target Acquisition, but... I, I don't think you're really relying on that too much for this ship. I think the concealment for for a change, from my perspective at least, is definitely better off for this ship. Um, you do still want to bring her out a little bit as far as her maneuverability, so I do have Steering Gears Mod 2 on there. Um, but there is an argument that could also be made for Propulsion Mod 2, just so that she can accelerate, slow down, whatever, a little bit faster. Um... It makes stopping in smoke easier, or trying to bail out of a smoke screen if a ship's pushing too close, things like that. So, there's that to be said also. Um, I definitely would not say damage control, just because she is so simple and squishy. In anything that's going to be aiming at you is probably going to be using AP more often than not anyway, at which point you're just going to be screwed no matter what you do. So, damage control system isn't going to help you out a whole hell of a lot there. On top of that, she is a cruiser, so she benefits from the cruiser timing on floods and fires, as opposed to something like a battleship, where this would definitely make a much greater difference. Now, for her light guns, she does have reasonable accuracy and dispersion. Um, I still went with Aiming Systems Mod 1, just because it's nice being able to verify that more, even more shells get on target. Um, especially when you're spraying 16 of them at a target, and you are relying more on your fire chance than anything else for these shells. So, definitely want to make sure as many of them are landing on target to just kind of bring that fire chance really out to the forefront. I suppose the other option could be invested in... Uh, specifically, I would go with AA Guns Mod 1, just to bolster her... Uh, well, I, I can't even really say that. The, the aiming systems is probably the single best uh, option to go with for this ship, honestly. Um, main battery mod 2, I mean, your guns already traverse incredibly. The only thing this, and all it would do is hurt your reload, actually. So it, it's really worthless for this ship. And AA guns mod 2, her AA is already powerful enough without heavy, having two extra flak bursts. And that's really all it would give you. So, yeah, aiming systems mod 1... At least for now, until they propose or put out some of the uh, newer upgrade modules in the next patch, this is probably definitely the way to go. Um, for now, what with the Propulsion Mod 1 and Steering Gears Mod 1 being separate, I would definitely say Steering Gears Mod 1, just because in my personal experience, Steering Gears on cruisers tend to get knocked out a little bit more than Propulsion. And, well, I've already mentioned my thoughts as far as damage control on this ship. It's really kind of a moot point, especially since most of the time you're going to be hiding in smoke anyway or basically just running for your life from anything that's big enough to overmatch your balanced stern armor regardless. Um, for main armaments, well, or slot one, of course, main armaments mod one, that's kind of the go-to for most ships. Um, I mean... I suppose an argument could be made for auxiliary armaments, just for her AA to survive a gunfight. But again, you're going to be hiding in smoke. You're not going to be shot at too much unless you're really playing this ship poorly. And even then, if you are being shot at, again, most of the time, if anybody really knows what they're doing, they're probably just going to be shooting AP at you anyway. You're not going to be worrying about these guns getting knocked out too much. On top of that, she's got very strong AA anyway. You're 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 not relying on your auxiliary armaments. You don't even have secondaries that you're giving a uh, benefit to here. So definitely main armaments mod one, hands down. Um, I mean, if it's a something that you have a 
huge issue with overall. I mean, you could probably go for main Magazine Mod 1, but honestly, I can't say that I've seen detonations occur too often for anything other than destroyers, so that you're, again, better off with Main Armaments Mod 1, just making your uh, main battery overall a little bit more survivable. So there is uh, that overall. As far as her commander skills, now, some of you may find this to be something of a travesty, but the most experienced Russian commander that I, that I have on any ship is a, a 13-pointer, and that's the one that I've got on my small lines right now. Um, he was actually the captain that I had on my Kutuzov. Um, I did a minor respec just because there were a couple of things that I wanted to change, especially for this ship. Um, primarily I wanted Adrenaline Rush to uh, bring her out just a little bit more in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think the other thing that I changed was I went for IFHE, or uh, th there was something that I changed when I respect this commander. I honestly forget what. It was a little over a week ago. But um, we did go with Preventative Maintenance, Expert Marksman, because there's really no... I, I mean, I could maybe opt for Torpedo Acceleration, but again, this is my Kutuzov commander, so I'm probably going to be switching him back and forth, and that ship does kind of benefit a little bit more from uh, Expert Marksman than the uh, Smolensk does. So th there is that to be said. Adrenaline Rush, of course, this is kind of a standard, like, second or third skill for uh, most most of my ships, actually, just because as I take damage, I like to be able to get my guns firing a little bit more regularly, and it helps me maybe be able to finish off targets easier, things like that, before I get killed. So there's that to have in mind. And with these guns, it just gives these guns even more blazing or just blazing rates of fire. So definitely something for this ship is, that is a must. In fact, I would, if you were just starting off on the, the Smolensk and working with the three-point captain, I would say preventative maintenance and adrenaline rush first. Then maybe lo look at some of the other tier two skills. Of course, demo expert to bring out the fire chance a little bit more. Um, an extra 2% for fire chance, bringing her up from 7% to 9%. So it's a pretty substantial change when you really think about it. And, I mean, this ship set fires like crazy. So demo expert, that's that's a big one. And IFHE, again, is another bigger one. Just because she does have the 130s, I think they're like a 24, 25 per, uh, millimeter penetration baseline, which that's not even really enough to get past the armor on some uh, tier tier 8 cruisers, unless you're firing it like a light cruiser. Um, so going for IFHE at least gets you past the threshold of tier 10 cruiser armor. So it is a big deal uh, to opt for IFHE on this ship. Um, it, granted, it doesn't help you much with battleships or the like, but with battleships and everything, you're more relying on damage from fire, setting fires, anything like that, with your just absolutely blistering rate of fire anyway. Um, as far as secondary skills for this ship, if you were building a, ca a captain specifically for the Smolensk, um, again, I'd say right off Expert Marksman, look at either Jack of All Trades for Reload on the Consumables, or maybe even, um, I mean, an argument might be able to be made from the last stand, but I would also probably say Torpedo Acceleration being more likely. Just because, again, for a, a tailor-made build for this ship specifically, you don't need that turret rotation. But the torpedo acceleration would definitely help her torpedoes out a little bit, even if it does cost you a little bit of her torpedo range. Um, the way I see it, though, if you're relying on torpedoes in this ship, you're, you've got something that's getting a little too close for comfort anyway, so that range isn't going to matter too much to you. Um, other things that this ship will benefit fully from are basic firing training and advanced firing training, pushing her range out a little bit farther, and getting her reload down a little bit more. So those are definitely 
must skills for this ship. Um, now, as far as your level four skills, an argument could be made for concealment expert over IFHE. But again, I would definitely say IFHE more so just because you get so much more utility from it, being able to penetrate uh, heavy, heavy cruiser armor at tier 10. At least for now, unless they uh, put through uh, some of the proposed IFHE and demo expert changes. Um, but I, I honestly haven't heard a whole lot of news about those lately. So right now I'm just going to work on them continuing to be as they are and let that, let that be. Um, so as far as a tailor-made build specifically for this ship, again, my, my run would be preventative maintenance, adrenaline rush, torpedo acceleration, demo expert, basic firing training, inertia fuse high explosive, and advanced firing training. And that's really all there is to go as far as, uh, anything as far as the build on this ship. Um, so on that note, let's go ahead, take her on into battle and see how she performs. Okay, so getting into the first match here, you're actually going to see a little bit of why this ship is referred to as the, uh, OPHE spamming fire spitter light cruiser ship, because this match is going to be... Probably the most fires I have set in a single match in a long time. And it's purely because I am running this ship with Demo Expert, IFHE, and all of the fire chance bonus flags to just bring the fire chance of these 130 millimeters out as much as I possibly can. And it's going to make a huge impact on, well, literally everything that I shoot at. The first comer, of course, is this uh, Moskva, and well, I do have some support with it. Uh, yeah, two salvos in. I've already set one fire on the Moskva, but um, I do still have some support for the time being, but that support is really not interested in sticking around and helping me out too much. It's a bot battleship. There's only one other player on the map with me, and that being the case, the uh, bot battleship that I spawned with on this side of the map is really more interested in charging off towards the enemy cap circle than in uh, actually giving me any help. So I'm actually not going to have help from it for too terribly long here. Um, I've already got two more fires burning on that Moskva, getting it uh, just ticking away. And I decide to redirect my fire to the Grossa first. And this is, again, part of where this ship's overall firepower comes from. It's just the sheer volume of fire that this ship puts out. I mean, this is 16 shells every five seconds. I mean, I've already got two more fires burning on the Moskva, and I've only just redirected my guns on it. And the it, it's just burning and burning and burning away. Um, in fact, these guns fire so much, so quickly, that I think I actually damaged, saturated a few sections of that Moskva and opted to uh, start choosing to shoot at the Grosakur first while the Moskva burned down. Now, at this point, my smokescreen has dissipated, so this is where I'm actually the most vulnerable going up against this Grosakur first. Because even if I were to stop firing, it has closed to well within my surface detection range. And as the closest ship to the Grossa first, I am also the easiest target that it has. And I'm also a light cruiser. I mean, I, it could easily one-shot me if it looks at me wrong. In fact, one shot straight through my stern, it, it, it went... The, the, those 16-inch shells, they cut straight through my stern and into my citadel. Um, so I've already had half of my sh health just about shaved away. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's that, that hit hurt. And I'm just trying to do what I can. Just start to wiggle my ship around as much as I possibly can. Try to get over pens where it... Uh, gets me broadside, and otherwise just keep 
burning and burning and burning on it because it's literally all I can do. I mean, that there's no point in stopping firing at this point because I can't get out of detection range. I can't outrun it. I can't get away from it. I have no real cover to hide behind. So it's literally just a matter of uh, doing what I can to not get shot at. The nice thing is the smoke generator did come back up. So now I'm hidden again, at least until it closes within the 5.9 or what was it? 6.5 kilometers. But with only 2,500 health left at this point, it's not going to last that much longer, especially as I set one more fire. Now, I've already set a grand total of 12 fires for this match, which I think is the record for what I've set previously, and that was in one of my British battleships trying to work through the uh, Puerto Rico grind. This has also been primarily just sitting in smoke, spamming HE shells at targets that are within range from the safety of my smoke screen, basically, and just raining all kinds of death and destruction at them from long or almost max range of, as far as this ship is concerned. And I've done 160,000 damage. Keep that in mind. I've done 160,000 points worth of damage. Um, oh, I'm also on 13 fires now with that one gross occur first that what just went down. I'm... I wasn't sure what my torpedo stats were, so I did kind of look at them real quick, because uh, over the course of this match, I never got into a position where I felt like I needed to use them as a last resort or defensive or anything like that. So th that was literally... <laughs> I, I, had, I was looking at the torpedo stats because I had no idea what any of them were, because I hadn't felt the need to use them or even bother with them. Um, hey, guess what? There's another <laughs> fire on the Yamato. Um, there's a second fire on the Yamato. <laughs> um, th these guns, the way they set fires, how, how frequently they set fires is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> and let's see, just before it goes down, I think, I get, yep, one more fire on the bow of the Yamato, and it goes down, and I get the kill credit for that as well. 184,000 hit points worth of damage to enemy ships overall. And I do try to close the distance on the enemy aircraft carrier, but let's just say it doesn't get that far. Um, I just don't have the range to close in on it, and, well, I don't have the gun range to affect it either. Uh, so the enemy... I think it's actually the enemy, or sorry, the friendly GK, and not the not even the player GK, that actually finishes the enemy aircraft carrier off. On that note, just going to skip to the end of the match here, so that we can go over the battle results, which are rather uh, self-explanatory for where some of the OP-ness of this ship is uh, focused. 184,000 damage done, 229 thousand credits earned, and I did accidentally skip out of the uh, results screen there. Um, 2,920 EXP, 2,048 free EXP, 630 main battery hits with these guns, um, with better than half of those being non-penetrating hits, but even non-penetrating hits do still have the chance to set fires, and that is where that is still worthwhile overall. <clears throat> I did get credit I did get credit for three kills, sixteen fires, and even one spotting, and I think that may have been on the GK or the Moskva, one of the two. Um overall, I mean for most matches these would be relatively fair results regardless anyway, um regardless of any ship that I was in. However, it's well, I'm going to get there shortly. Um, <laughs> team score came out bottom of the team, or well, second on the team with 570 base EXP. The only ship that did better was the enemy, gro sorry, the friendly Grossacur first bot that killed the CV, um, probably because it killed so many aircraft, but that's really about it. 
Uh, the enemy gross occur first, though. 91,962 damage, 52,000 damage to the enemy Moskva, 25,800 to the enemy Yam, 14 to the en other gross occur first. But let's start looking at the fire damage that was done here. Let's take a minute to register the fact that I did just as much damage with fires as I did with my main battery. 93,000 damage from main battery versus 91,200 from fire. The enemy Moskva I hit for 21,000 hit points worth of fire damage. The enemy Yam, I mean 14,000. The hell, the gross occur first I hit with, what was it? 48,000 points worth of fire damage. So yeah, that, that, that says a lot overall in regards to just what this ship is capable of as a fire setter. And, I mean, there was little else that I actually accomplished in this match. I mean, I only tanked 184,000 points worth of potential damage. That's actually less, than I, less damage than I did. And, yeah. <laughs> as far as the match goes otherwise, I earned 173,000 credits, though I was running modifiers, but we're not really caring too much about the credit earnings overall for this over the course of this ship. Um, again, I'll simply state I'm happy as long as I turn a profit, and I was running modifiers, so turning a profit was relatively easy with this ship for this match. The commander also walked away from this match with an income of 4,004 EXP, pushing him towards becoming 14 point most advanced Russian commander on, on this game. Now, this second match I'm actually going to use more as a showcase of a serious what-the-fuck moment, and I'm gonna be rather blunt about that, because it was, it was seriously what-the-fuck time, because, well, it, it's also gonna be the reason why I'm running the battle from the very start, because, yes, that is actually the friendly Jetland who, right at the opening of the match, didn't even bother with the uh, concealment, anything, he just started shooting at me. I, to my knowledge, have never run into this player in my entire life playing this game. I don't know, I I've done nothing to offend him. I shoot, there is nothing to warrant this except for the fact that I am running in the Smolensk. That is the only thing I can figure I ever did wrong to this guy, and because of it, he is choosing to shoot at me for whatever fucking reason and it, it it's ridiculous what the f just seriously what the fuck was this guy doing what the f what the fuck was his problem what the hell did i ever do to him aside from choosing to play a ship that granted the majority of the player base continues to believe is heavily overpowered and it probably is but there's no reason for this. There is no excuse for this kind of behavior from anybody. Okay? I'm gonna come right out and say it. Especially to the point where he's focusing on shooting at me so much that even as enemy ships are shooting at him because he is blowing his own cover, he doesn't even bother starting to shoot at them until he's already down to a quarter of his health. Not only that, he does start shooting at the enemy ships, but by then he's already on so low health, he's blown his cover, he did even drop torpedoes. I, I know this because I did go back and look at the replay to see what he did after a certain after I looked away. But he, do he dropped torpedoes. He did start so shooting at the enemy ships. He's already dead, and we're not even two and a half minutes into the match. And... All because he decided to play like an absolute asshole. I I'm perfectly blunt about that. I have no qualms in calling him out about it and being vocal, being, dare I say, rather expletive about it. That, I, I mean, seriously. What did I ever do to him aside from running in a potentially overpowered ship that could take 
damage kills away from him. I wasn't even in a position to shoot at him. I'm on, a fr on the friendly team. Now, I'm going to admit, I was sorely tempted to shoot, at, to shoot back at him, but here's the thing. I didn't. Why? Because it would have made me no better than he was. If anything, it would have just given him even more excuse to be of an asshat. But, still, it was, what, what the hell? Seriously, what the hell was that all about? The, the, nothing, no, nothing excuses that. I, I'm, I'm sorry, a absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. By the way, I even mentioned that he had dropped torpedoes, that he had started shooting at the enemy ships. The torpedoes that he dropped did absolutely nothing. They didn't even hit anything. And I think he may have only chunked one of the, one of the destroyers for a couple of thousand hit points at most before he was just outright erased from the map. That's, that was his sole contribution to this match. His entire contribution to this match, basically, was to shoot at me and nothing else. That was his biggest accomplishment. Like, are, are you are you fucking serious? Are you are you truly fucking serious right now? But okay. Anyway, I've I've got to move on from that because I will go on about it all day long. That again, that there is just nothing, no reason at all for that absolute bullshit. I freely admit that based on some of the things that I was hearing and reading in forums and whatnot, or uh, even seeing from a couple of the other community contributors, that the matches that I've gone into with the Puerto Rico, I would have expected players to be shooting at me in the Puerto Rico. But, and I'm tempted to say that maybe some of them are somewhat justified because the way the, the, the whole Puerto Rico thing was done was seriously screwballed anyway. It's still not justified, mind you. Not not thoroughly justified. But I still could have understood that more than that asshat in the Jetland shooting at me in a Smolensk. A ship that can be earned completely free with a, a good chunk of actual effort in the game without even having to spend a cent. And I'm honestly not even really truly sure that I can call this ship properly overpowered simply because the guns really are rather underwhelming as far as the overall damage that they do. The only thing that this ship is good at is being a fire spitter, and that's literally it. So, yeah. People have... I, I've had friendlies shoot at me in the Smolensk, but not in the Puerto Rico, the one ship that I would have almost expected people to shoot at me in. I, 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 I got nothing. I, I've literally got nothing to even begin to fathom what, what that was all about. That, that I Again, just no reason for it. None, nothing whatsoever. Anyway... Um, overall, I haven't had a bad match. 135,000 damage done overall so far. Um, 10 fires set so far, 2 kills between the uh, two cruisers that I was facing down. Um, I'm already upwards of 500 main battery hits. I've even sunk one, uh, well, uh, okay, less than 500 main battery hits, but I'm getting there ra rather quickly. And I've even sunk, shot down one enemy aircraft. But the aircraft carrier is starting to give me some attention, so that aircraft tally is going to start climbing. And my hit counter is just going to start going even further as I start focusing my attention on the enemy Hakuryu. Um, obviously, Hakuryu being a uh, aircraft carrier and... I'm, I mean, she does have an armored deck, but I mean, all things considered, there's nothing really... Uh, a Hakuryu cut in the open by a Smolensk is basically just a sitting duck. There is nothing that it can really do to me except try to run and maybe hope that it had some concealment somewhere, but this is a bot. It's not even near an island or anything. It, it It's just sitting in open water, spinning in circles, and there's just 
th there would have been nothing that anything could do, and I don't even think a player could have done better at handling me than this bot. Period. End of story. It was just... There was so much one-sidedness in this engagement against the Hakuryu. It it's not even funny. So anyway, the match finishes off. And we see my final tally, 188,556 damage done, 286,000 credits earned, 3,155 EXP, 2,216 free EXP, 735 base EXP earned for the match, which is phenomenal, and let's see, 655 main battery hits, 12, only 12 aircraft kills, but that's because the CV started focusing on me late in the match, not early on when a, a, a larger aircraft tally would have been exacted. Um, three kills, 11 fires, five defense ribbons, even one spotting, and three incapacitations. So overall, definitely not a bad match by any stretch of the imagination. And th there is also a part of me that wonders a little bit how much of that was also directed my way from the Jetland who was shooting at me? Because I do know that compensation is taken out of their earnings um, for doing damage to a teammate. So, I don't know there. As far as damage done, 49,000 damage to the enemy Hakuryu, 42,800 to the enemy Amalfi. Uh, 12,000 to the Udaloi, 30,000 to the Moskva, 30,000 to the Yam. I mean, this, these are defining amounts of damage regardless, no matter what you do. Um, only 22,000 points worth of damage from fires. The rest, the other remaining 160,000 actually came from main battery hits. And yes, I actually do make a point of going back, even during the recording, and actually reporting this, uh, th th this Jetland because th there was just absolutely nothing, nothing in the world at all to excuse what he did. I do also give a minor compliment to the uh, enemy, the friendly Prince Eugen, who I guess was trying to come to my defense and got himself marked as TK as well. I mean, I suppose I can say at least thank you for standing up for me, but you didn't need to sink to his level, bud. You really didn't need to sink to his level in order to come to my de defense. Um, I appreciate the support. I appreciate that. Uh, that's why I do give you the one vote up, but don't, don't stoop to that the asshat's level, please. For, for the love of God, do not stoop to his level. It, it's not worth it. Um... Coming back over to here, I did tank a potential of almost a quarter of a million hit points worth of damage. And the ship itself only absorbed 15,500 points worth of damage. Um, I did 20,000 damage to enemy aircraft. And, I mean, overall, it was a substantially more showcasing match than the previous one in regards to what this ship is capable of under the right circumstances, and as long as she's facing off against cruisers more so than uh, battleship at close range. 230,000 credits take home for the match, which is nice solid earnings. Um, even with uh, all of the modifiers considered, there still would have been a profit for that match, so awesome. And Commander also walked away from this match with 4,551 EXP. Um, yeah, just no 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 excuse for that guy whatever whatsoever anyway moving on to match number 3 um this is going to be more of a showcase match for I i'm almost tempted to say what i would recommend not doing with this ship and not from a standpoint where i actually do something so wrong that i actually get myself killed it's more from just the standpoint of it, it severely limited my capabilities um, I actually decided to try and play a sort of backline, uh, smoke, HE spam sniper. Now, granted, I think the other thing here was also a little bit my positioning and also relative to where the enemy ships were going. But, I mean, overall, I think as far as things go, I probably should have taken the opportunity to push forward a little bit more, especially for this match. 
I would have benefited from it a lot more. But I, again, I was trying a different tactic just to see what I could do and if I could take advantage of her fire setting capabilities like I did somewhat in the first match that you've seen. The other flip side, of course, here being that I did have a full team of players, um, and that does have a major impact on what you can do over the course of a match as well, because your team as a whole just tends to be largely more effective. Um, it's even more so in this match because there's not just me in the Smolensk, there's another player who's in the Smolensk on the other side of the map, and on this same side of the map with me, I also have a player in a Kutuzov. So we've got three smoking Russian borderline OP, OP if not just flat out OP ships overall, um, in uh, very close quarters and very, very capable of doing high amounts of damage. So between my positioning, between the uh, overall effectiveness of the team and the ships that were on the team, this, this did end up being a very lackluster match. On top of the fact that, again, I just kind of positioned myself where I was a backline cruiser away from everything, not even really in a position where anything wanted to shoot at me too much. Because they are bots, they're going to shoot at the easiest or the uh, closest target. Usually whatever's easiest and closest. So by being backline, I can pretty much guarantee I'm not going to be shot at unless it's literally the only thing an enemy ship, enemy ship can shoot at. And, well, I mean, it does guarantee me safety, but it doesn't guarantee me any damage or uh, secure kills. So there is that to be said. It's also got something to do with uh, my actual dispersion and my effectiveness on target. Um, the overall number of hits that I'm actually landing on target are reduced, even with uh, the dispersion reduction from, what is it, Firing Control Systems 1. Um, and just overall being able to adequately lead at the longer range because these shells are lighter, they do slow down, they do float a little bit more, so it can be a little bit more difficult to actually calculate the proper lead and actually land shells on target. Um, in fact, I actually end up relying more on trying to focus on uh, segments of the ships that aren't burning instead of actually trying to do reliable damage. And that's the other part of where I think my problems came from in this ship, was just trying to hit the just the bow or just the stern of a ship at long range that's maybe trying to turn or maneuver a little bit. Can be tricky, um, and that does also lend a little bit to the uh, overall outcome here. I probably would have gotten one kill at least if the uh, friendly... Uh, Lennon hadn't just deleted that lion for me, but I mean overall there are definitely worse things that could have happened. Again, I, I was trying a different tactic for this ship and I'm not a hundred percent, at least for me, for, for the purposes of co-op matches, I don't think it works out well for this ship. It may be a completely different story when you're dealing with a Smolensk in random battles, but as far as my purposes or any co-op player's purposes, Sitting in the back and just being a more passive out of the way sort of shooter doesn't do you too many favors. As a whole, I only walk away from this third match with 83,000 damage done, 121,000 credits earned, uh, 1,555 EXP, 1,095 free EXP, 244 main battery hits where I definitely fired easily four or five times that in the overall shell count, only got credit for one ship kill, and I only got eight fires. Of course, here I am saying only eight fires when a lot of ships even struggle to just make three or four over the course of a match. But this is the small lens. It excels at setting fires. I come away as a solid middle of the team with 362 base EXP. I mean, overall, for a number of matches, that's nothing exactly to sneeze at, but for a player as good as I am, that's actually a rather lousy match, to be perfectly frank. Um, 
I did get 34,600 damage from fires, so uh, a little less than half my overall damage tally, with 48,000 being from direct damage. And, yeah, okay, I was exaggerating a little bit on how many shells I fired, but more than twice what I fired, or half of what I fired is what actually hit target. Um, because I was so far back, I didn't get a whole lot of, of uh, shots fired at me, so no potential damage tanked. I did get some spotting damage, and I also got a, modic a, a mediocre bit of potential damage tanked. Nothing really to write home about at all. As far as the overall earnings for this match, if I hadn't had any modifiers on this ship, I would have actually taken a hit for this match. I would have had about a thousand credits worth of loss overall for this match without the modifiers. So there is that to be said in regards to just how, I guess, lousy this match was. Those of you who have been with me for a while know that I at least like my earnings to come out where they pay for the service costs of my ship as far as just repair, resupply, etc. and so forth. And of course, for a final note, the commander earned 2,500 EXP. So anyway, folks, that is my review of the tier 10 um, super overpowered, <laughs> I, I honestly find that hard to say with a straight face, um, Russian light cruiser, the Smolensk. I hope you found the video enjoyable, maybe even a little bit informative in regards to, uh, what this ship is capable of doing, and I, uh, hope to catch you all again next time. For those of you who are new to my channel, please do not forget to like and subscribe if you have enjoyed what you've seen here and wish to uh, be notified of future content. And on that note, I shall go ahead, let everybody go. Have a good one, and I wish you all happy hunting, folks.